introduce our two panelists. To my far left, um, if you've been on these webcasts before, you've seen him. Uh, Dennis Cox, the CTO, founder of Breaking Point Systems. Um, Dennis is uh, authority on networks and network equipment um, validation and network security. So he's really going to be diving in and taking a really good um, viewpoint on a lot of the data that we found in terms of how that can help folks. He's also the author of numerous patents that span a diverse set of topics that I won't list here. Um, thanks again, Dennis, for joining us. And then next to Dennis um, and to my immediate left, I'm excited to have join us for the first time is Chris Adams. Uh, Chris is an application protocol engineer here at Breaking Point, has broad experience in software development, systems administration in the government, IT, and storage industries. Uh, previously, Chris worked for a defense contractor, and I think that's pretty much all I'll say on that. Um, and Chris is also the author of this research paper that we'll be getting into and has done a ton of work analyzing a lot of this data that we'll be sharing with all of you. So thanks, Chris, so much for joining us today. So as you can see from the agenda, we actually have a lot. We have a lot more to cover in this one than we typically do. So I want to make sure that we get to a lot of these things and get to folks' questions as well. So what I'm going to do is actually jump right in. And the first graph that you see in the research papers, you know, that really stood out to me, obviously. Um, and it's showing both wireline and mobile broadband penetration, uh, this just in the U.S. But I thought it was a great place to spend a few minutes. And Dennis, as the veteran of the webcast, I'll throw the first question to you. Um, why are we seeing such a dramatic rise here? What are the main drivers? Uh, the main drivers? Well, people want the Internet everywhere. And that's, that's really it. Uh, at the end of the day, if you look at your web queries, what you want to get are that data you want to access, it's usually on the go. What's my flight schedule? Uh, what's the score of the game, et cetera. And so people want that data and they, and they want it on their cell phones. It's a device they have with them at all times. It also increases the user base of people that use the Internet because the phone is available to everybody. You don't, you don't use a computer. I have, my niece can use it. She's eight. Right? Mm -hmm. She can use it, no problem. So that's really the main reason for it. And as people get used to the Internet and the information right there, they want it everywhere. And they don't want it just at a station in a coffee shop or a, a, an internet cafe. They want it on the go. Everywhere they are, they want the internet. Right. And so that's why you see the wireline, uh, the wireless increase at such a dramatic fashion. And actually, as you can see, I think the wireline, you'll actually see tail off. At some point, wireless will get so high and so ubiquitous everywhere that there'll be no point for wireline anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do we have kind of a thought of when that would be? And in the research that you've seen and all the work that you've done, is, is there a way to kind of predict as we see this kind of crossover, if you will? Uh, I don't know about the, the crossover so much as in large parts of the world, uh, their first broadband experience is going to be a wireless, yeah. uh, over a wireless medium. Yep. And so uh, that's definitely where the growth is. There's um, 4G, it's going to be pretty amazing because the speeds are going to be there and the latency is, is going to come down and we'll start to see the kinds of applications that um, are really going to take advantage. I mean, already the networks are, are stressed, but we're going to see more applications that really push the, the limits of the network. So um, wireless yeah. has challenges. And you mentioned, so if I'm reading a lot of this correctly, you know, broadband's growing nearly a thousand percent in six years. Wireless is supposed to do the same, but in half the time. Which is remarkable uh, when well, you think about well, it. Look at, I mean, look at the service providers here. We're in Austin, yep. a tech town. We've talked about uh, many times. So we have 4G, and we have three providers right now of 4G. We have Sprint, Clear Channel, and Time Warner. Time Warner is, uh, is our cable provider here. They provide us with tel uh, telephone and internet access, and of course, cable TV. And they have 4G in the homes, and so. You can take your 4G account, you sign up with Time Warner, and you walk around the whole city and you get 4G access. That's amazing. So think about it this way. They go to the, the cable head end, they turn onto a 4G tower. Now they don't have to lay wires everywhere. It's cheaper for them. It's great. You can change, you don't have to put a satellite in your house. You don't have to do all this infrastructure goes away. Wireless is so much better for that. Right. And that actually, so I'm going to jump to the next slide um, because if you look at the investment that's being made in this infrastructure, which is what you're talking about here, it, depending on who you ask, $72 billion for the mobile broadband market just in 2010 for infrastructure investments. Yeah. Um, where is that being spent? Depends on the service provider. Okay. So if you're uh, if you're Time Warner, you're going to get into the wireless market because it's, it's cheaper overall. 
Uh, people want that access to paying for it. Monthly fees are great. I mean, fifty nine, seventy nine dollars a month. These are good add on fees. Uh, my TiVo is wireless in, in my house, and I have Time Warner, and it's connected to the internet through wireless, which is amazing because that's video on demand. Amazon, Blockbuster, uh, Netflix, all goes through that TiVo. So the infrastructure really depends on the service provider. So a uh, Time Warner is going to be local to the, the cable provider where they are. Where a Sprint, they're looking at forward thinking. They're going high speed, you know, everything, the first get WiMAX, all the LTE, all the 4G stuff, they're really pushing it. If you're looking at Verizon, well, they're looking at blanketing everything, uh, access everywhere on a train from Washington to Long Island. I had to get two train trips, and Verizon guy next to me, he, he was on the whole time. He never dropped, every tunnel. So the coverage there is amazing. And if you're at and you're trying to handle the stress, mm-hmm. the stress of so many providers. And they have, uh, we talk about it all the time, it was on the front page of CNN, which is uh, on the web. Uh, what it is is South by Southwest was here in Austin, and you have all these tech guys, 250,000, hipsters and tech guys coming in, and AT&T had to put up towers everywhere to make sure they met, you know, the iPhones would work. Last year, they had a big debacle, and it got all over the news, and that RSA is all over the news, and that CES is all over the news. So they, they have to put that infrastructure on. How do I handle mass crowds, crowds that are going to do that? And so mm-hmm. everybody's at a different thing they need in mobile broadband. Right. At the end of the day, though, it's all for one thing. Right. The customers are the ones. Yeah. You know, they, well, the, the research that I came across in – writing this paper was that customers are, are pretty ambivalent towards the um, the wireless medium that's used. They just want to have the access that's fast and available. And so for them, you know, it, it's interesting to see that these carriers are, are you know, playing the game differently, but um, the, the carriers are going to have to balance how they get the revenue from the subscribers and subscribers um, have different needs. Mm-hmm. So some people are going to want to be on the social networking services. Some people are going to be wanting to do streaming video. So um, even the, the Sandvine report that just came out really talks about that, how there's going to have to be more of a uh, kind of an a la carte pricing model, even where you, um, customers can choose how much video they want to consume, how, how much social networking. And I think a lot of the data that you have in your research report shows that that's pretty much inevitable. Um, and you talked about kind of the growth in usage. You know, we're going to see 4x growth in usage, but the, you know, the pontificators are saying it's only going to be 1x in revenue. No. Um, it, what, you're saying no, no that's way. wrong? Yeah, that's just wrong. What, is it wrong because they're miscalculating or they're missing something? Or yeah, they're missing the fact that, uh, okay, so it's going to move. So one thing about mobile broadband that's dramatically different than wireline is the users. The, the type of users on mobile broadband are dramatically different than that. Like, for example, I have here, I'm cheating here, I actually have... The U- European providers' data, um, what their broadband users do versus their mobile. So mm-hmm. in the future report we're going to do. And the traffic is absolutely the opposite way because these people are hardcore using something that's uh, from Xbox Live to lots of Skype, lots of different things than these guys. It, mm-hmm. it's, and we'll go into that later on. So the, the users, they're dramatic. And it's much more easier for people to use mobile, bro- mobile uh, applications and things of that nature. You're going to steal money from those wireline guys as it goes mobile. So that's one way the revenue is going to go up. And you have a great model because unlike wireline, where everybody has a router and that router and they take care of four PCs, everybody's got to pay for a phone. And every single device you make revenue on. And so it's $59 for this one and $59 for this one and $59 for this one. And my sister's got three kids and they're in New York and they all have cell phones and they're young, under the age of 11. They all have cell phones. And the, of course, guess what? That's going to cost her every month for every one. So mm-hmm. it used to be that, that you get 50 bucks for broadband access. Now she's going to get 250 bucks for mobile access. Oh, by the way, you still want the wireline at home for other things too. So it's $300. So it, that adds up really quickly. Not to mention, at home, you don't really have a cap on your broadband. On your wireless, most of these providers have a 5 gig cap. Mm-hmm. People go over that, it's more money. So I actually think the revenue numbers are way off. It'll be higher than the usage numbers. Right, right. And then, you know, the final thing kind of in this, and we'll move right into the report, but if we're obviously seeing vulnerabilities and all that stuff go up as well as the growth of mobile happens. And crazy assumption, that will just continue to happen. Um, that will skyrocket more than it have ever did on wireline. That will be far worse than wireline. The security problem is, is 